Hi, and welcome to another episode of Awaken Your Imagination. My name is Tom Medwin Jr., and I'm starting this channel simply because I've been overwhelmed as of late. If you watch my episode one, you'll see where my daughter's appendix auto-amputated itself, and my father's heart aneurysm completely disappeared, and I provide the medical documentation for both my own food allergies and diagnosed IBS are slowly but surely disappearing. And uh, what do you do with that, right? I mean, what do you do with it? And uh, I'm here to help teach you how you also can realize all of the desires of your heart. It's so simple, even a child can do it. And uh, where I teach from is scripture as interpreted through the lens of Paul the Apostle, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, and Neville Goddard's appropriation of how to apply that gospel, namely that of imagining when persisted in creates reality. And the reason I'm starting with these two videos of certain manifestations in my life is because I want you to believe this gospel as it'll change yours and your loved ones. And ultimately where this is going is it will change our world. And indeed, the lion will lay down with the lamb, and the nations will beat their swords into plowshares. And that's where we're going. My call is to uh, help awaken this imagined nation, this nation of those that would imagine their lives and their, our world together better. And before I get to that, I'm going to give you some evidences so that you believe with me. Is that fair enough? I'm a lifelong searcher of truth, and I've sought it high and low, namely in scripture behind pulpits of the Christian faith. And I ultimately came to, to my current conclusion as of five months ago when I found Neville, or Neville found me. <laughs> it's been a very challenging and jarring awakening, I would call it to one like myself coming out from under the bondage of religion, which is exactly what the name religion means. In the Latin, it comes from legare, which means to bind, and re, of course, means again, to bind again and again. And there's a lot of mental undoing that needs to happen uh, on this journey from your Egypt of slavery through the wilderness and into your promised land. So I simply want to help you with that because that's the journey that I've been on. Okay, so episode one, I have just some... Um, Crazy Healing Manifestations, Episode 2. I'm going to talk to you about some money manifestations. And then from there, I'm just going to speak to you real uh, frankly on uh, what I believe and how to appropriate, appropriate what Neville taught and how you can find it for yourself. So I encourage you, before you cast judgment, just try it. I have plenty of Christian friends that just throw stones and have an immediate knee-jerk reaction of fear and crying foul or blasphemy or this is a devil. Listen, I'm going to cut right to the root of what I've come from in the Christian religion that is filled with superstition and limiting beliefs, and quite frankly, not putting faith in Jesus Christ, who's way more successful than we've given him credit for. And as Neville says, is your own wonderful human imagination. So before you turn me off and turn back like they turned back from Jesus, He's saying challenging things like eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And they all left, really, but the 12. And the beauty is that this process is about taming those 12 qualities of your mind, those disciplines of mind, and realizing the ultimate in self-empowerment and self-realization. And that is God. As Jesus Christ says from his own lips, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And so this channel is dedicating to exploring what that means, understanding the scriptural interpretation of actual, literal creation history versus that of what the churches of the world have taught in a secular, historical, lit uh, literal interpretation. Does that make sense? Or as Neville says, the scripture is not secular history, but it's salvation history. It's the process by which ancient wisdom and ancient teacher is written by the Spirit of the Lord instruct us how the world continues to be created by faith. And we appropriate that simply by imaginal acts, which when felt to be real, create your reality. And so we find that we've been the creator all along, 
as we're made in his image and his likeness, the very extension, emanation of God, however you want to phrase it, we're talking about that which is indescribable. All right, but so that you believe that gospel, and it's, it's to me, infinitely interesting to delve into the depths of, and the wonder and the beauty of that, and we're going to. So I'm going to talk about how I personally experience that as, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm a Christian mystic. I don't have a label, quite frankly, and neither do you. That's the thing. You can't compare yourself with another. Uh, as Jesus Christ says, the spirit of truth who would be in you, he would lead you into a knowledge of all truth, and you have no need that another man teach you. Well, that might sound like a paradox because here I am teaching you, but the reality is you don't need me and you don't need anybody else out there in the whole wide world except yourself and that spirit of truth that is your higher self, your truest essence of who you are. For the very basic Apostles' Creed says there is but one spirit, right? So those of you that are hearing the voice of the accuser right now and all the thoughts are going off on how this doesn't match up with your sound doctrine, we'll bring it back to the simplicity of it. I'm going to help you work through that exodus from the bondage of religion and the captivity of your soul into the freedom that is yours by birthright. Is that fair enough? Does that excite you? Do you feel a spark of life going off on the inside? Well, then I say explore that because Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is within. So if you want to take that journey with me uh, on whatever level you want, just on a surface level, or you want to go deeper with experiencing some of my life, this is part of me responding to the call, okay? All right, before I keep blabbering on, let me tell you some money miracles, and I'm going to provide the, a proof below including the manifestation of a $50,000 check that came in the mail. I tend to drag on on my story, so I'm going to try to really condense this one. The short version is this, and please watch episode one as a, as a prerequisite to this, because you hear that the uh, turning point, if you will, in all of this for me was back in December when my daughter gave herself appendicitis, and later by understanding the law as taught by Neville, my daughter's appendix auto-amputated itself, as confirmed by a surgeon, and I have the photos to post it. That's in episode one of Awaken Your Imagination. So when I refer to what happened with my daughter, that's what I'm talking about. That was a turning point for me of really understanding that imagination really does create reality. And that's what scripture has been trying to tell us all along in this marvelous hidden way. It's so life-giving and beautiful when you see it. I want to help teach it to you as Neville taught. It's beautiful. All right. Money miracles. About two years before this thing happened with my daughter, with her appendix, which happened at the turn of the new year, we'll call it the new year Christmas time of last year into the new year of 2018. Two years before that, I am a struggling youth pastor. I left the church because, quite frankly, I've been on this road for about seven years of meditating deeply on what Paul called the gospel of grace and what that really means. And I'll get into that in future episodes. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It actually is the perfect law of liberty that supersedes karmic law. So those of you snared in uh, law of attraction kind of stuff, and you're on the endless dog chasing its tail or hamster on the wheel, whatever you want to call it, trying to dial in your vibrations and your right frequencies and all of that. Listen, it's much, much simpler than that. Just read Neville, please. Um, I could come on here and teach Neville stuff as if it were my own, and some people do that, but I believe in honor and giving credit to where credit is due. Neville is a treasure trove, and who else can tell it like him, right? And at the same time, no one else can tell it like me. So here I am telling my story, sharing my experiences for our modern day, 2018, uh, as of the time of this recording. This also, by the way, is uh, meant to be some of a legacy for my children and their children, as I hope they find this someday. And I'm speaking to them, if it were. I'm really speaking to myself uh, as I'm at this phase of my journey. Anyway, two years before all of this, I'm a broke youth pastor. Uh... I leave the church and I literally, I, I now live about a block and a half from the beach right behind me this way. That's my kiddies, my wife and kids out there. They're on summer break and uh, I'm doing this video because they're out in the pool area now. It's my one chance to get a little bit of a quiet house. Anyway, I'm out at the beach. I take my guitar out there Sunday mornings. I'm like John the Baptist, right? I'm just a voice of one crying in the wilderness, not trying to proselytize, not trying to convince anyone, simply share my experience of the marvel of the gospel of grace, as I'll teach to you later, as Paul taught it, Neville teaches it um, in his own way. Anyway, the, the, the short version of a long story is the time came in my life where I needed to occupy a place of wealth for myself and for my family. I was late in my 30s. I was living barely paycheck to paycheck, sometimes not at all, slowly acquiring debt, um, wondering... What is that place of perfect self-expression for me and that thing that I can get paid for doing, 
right? What is that convergence of my passions and my talents and my skills and my abilities and that which I love and that which has meaning to me, that which is beautiful to me, that which is who I really am and also brings wealth into my life, right? What is that, what is that essence of that thing of who you really are, right? Because I'm not getting any younger. So that's one of my overriding motivations my whole life is life is short. You know, my best friend from childhood uh, died when we were in our mid-20s and I miss him every day. And so I have a constant reminder that life is short. So what am I waiting for, right? Live the dream now is the whole thing. So I'm thinking that, uh, long story short, I'm watching shows like Shark Tank and the entrepreneurial flame is, is rising in me. So anyway, I'm laying on my bed and I'm, I'm sort of a, a armchair inventor at the time. And I've actually had dozens of invention ideas come so clearly and vividly like in a flash of inspiration. The great Walter Russell, if you read some of Walter, he's kind of congruent to a Neville type, but in a different realm. Uh, very wonderful, beautiful stuff. So read some Walt, uh, Walter Russell if you have not. And um, anyway, Walter Russell, who I'll give credit to for this statement, says something to this effect that inspiration is the language of the spirit. Right, so I'm getting these, these flashes of it. By the way, this is where this is all going. It's an, a revolution of the knowledge age is what we're on the precipice of. We've had the information age and you saw what that did to the world. Well, watch what's happening with the knowledge age that is now beginning. It's already been happening, but it's exploding as we speak. And if you're watching this, you're a part of it. So welcome to the awakening. And it's kind of jarring. So I hope this material is to help you along the journey as I'm helping myself. Anyway, Dozens of inventions uh, flashed through me at various times in my life. And I would easily say, without exaggerating, a handful of them I've seen years later show up in the marketplace. So just over the last couple decades, I'm now 40, uh, from the time I was in my late teens, I've seen this happen over the course of time. So anyway, I said all of that to say two years ago, I finally come to the point I'm watching Shark Tank. This thing's uh, upon my bed at night. You talk, I hadn't found Neville yet, mind you, but upon my bed at night, I can't get out of my thoughts and my imaginings um, a particular invention. I'm not even going to name it because I really want to reach those of you that are skeptical as well. And so I don't want you to think this is all some scheme to sell product. I'm not here to sell you anything. <laughs> uh, I do want to write a book. So I might sell you on a book in the future. Uh, but for now, I'm just doing this like Neville because I like to do it and I won't be passing the plate. Okay. This gospel won't cost you a nickel as Neville says. And I love that about the man. Just has always rung so true in my heart. So I want to I wanna do the same. This is all for a giving and for a re-giving. Isn't that beautiful? What if we all live our life by that way? That's where we're going with this knowledge revolution, this knowledge age. All right. This particular invention I can't let go of for months at a time. So I, I'm wised up enough and motivated enough to realize I got to do something for my family. Life is short. What am I waiting for? Right? I have Google at my fingertips with all of the information that is out there that I could need on how to bring an invention to reality and on and on, you know, all of it, how to manufacture it. So a long story short, I concluded on doing a uh, Kickstarter project and I launched my Kickstarter after months of build up, months of prayer, mind you, now I was a Christian, uh, you know, good Christian boy, not so good. I mean, I'm still doing stuff like everybody else does. I'm messing up and I'm needing forgiveness like everybody. So don't, this has nothing to do with behavior, as Neville says. But I'm a good Christian boy as far as I'm weighing in and believing it, right? I'm giving my life to it. I'll talk more about my story in, in later episodes, perhaps. But this has been an important as, uh, as a seeker of truth, questioning the nature of reality from the time I was a boy. Uh, this, is, this is the journey I've been on. So anyway, I'm praying to, as Neville says, to a God out there. I'm still believing he's in me. So I am. I'm believing I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. I've believed scripture. Anyway, so I'm praying. And uh, a big build up after months of due diligence, uh, some capital investment of my own, of which I barely have any. I'm putting it on credit cards. Actually, I'm self-funding myself that way, which I feel guilty about doing. My dad taught me to do otherwise. But what else do you do? I, I got to find a way to, to move forward in life somehow. Big build up, big excitement, big anticipation. I launch a Kickstarter project that I believe is going to change the world. And day one is just crickets, man. Just nothing happening. <laughs> and I remember sitting at the kitchen table with my wife and kids for dinner and just having that first sense of despair, the sense, the thought of despair. And I want to tell you that is Satan. And as Neville teaches, all of scripture is a psychodrama is a psychological drama that unfolds within every person and all of its characters, the unnumbered states of consciousness that you'll experience as part of your journey, as part of this grand plan of God's redemption through you, 
personally and intimately. How wondrous is that? So even Satan, who in the original Greek text is translated accuser, it's a state of consciousness of your own. Didn't Jesus say, my sheep who know my voice follow me and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Is that right? So we all hear the voice of a stranger. And so that first day sitting around the table, I heard the voice and I had a decision to allow Satan to enter my heart, in which case nothing would have happened, or to persist in the assumption that that which I've imagined to be true would come to pass. And it's very hard. It's a very simple thing. And I'm going to teach it to you the best I know how. Go right to the source. Go right to Scripture and ask the Spirit of truth for yourself, the Holy Spirit who is in you. And search out, uh, search out uh, Neville Goddard's teaching. If you're new to Neville, it's free online. Just use Google. It's not hard. Search him on YouTube. Search his books are free online. I'll give you some resources in the links below, in the comments below. Anyway, day one is crickets. And it's the test of your faith. It's just when you're believing for something very intensely, it's almost as if the opposite's got to happen first. You got to just go beyond the breaking point. I hate to use the quip, it's darkest before the dawn, you know, but it's really true. Listen to my episode one with the story of my daughter. You know, same thing with my daughter, to the brink of death, literally. (sighs) Day two, going to bed, not feeling great that night, quite honestly. But day two, I wake up and I have an email from Kickstarter. And it says, congratulations, we've given you our staff pick award. I didn't even know what that was, quite honestly, but it put me in a special area of the site. And by the end of that day, I was getting messages from friends of mine that they were seeing my mug on various websites around the internet. The first one was a web. Oh gosh, I just said, well, you don't know what my invention is anyway. Anyway, it was on some, it was on some big websites and um, household name ones. I mean, uh, Mental Floss, Inc. Magazine, The Chive, on and on it goes. I got a message from people at Good Morning America, a producer to be exact. And uh, they flew me up to New York to be live on Good Morning America. I later almost got on Shark Tank. Now here's, a, here's an interesting part of the story. I applied for Shark Tank and I made it into the final pool of contestants, working with the producers, working on stage design, working on the list of questions they give you that you think the sharks are gonna ask you and what are the answers you're gonna give. All of that, two weeks away from filming, I thought this was it, this was the destiny for where I was going, right? This is where it all started for me. And guess what happened? Two weeks before filming, I got cut. Didn't make it on. It was a dagger, man. Bummer, right? Major bummer. Um, felt like giving up, quite frankly, because I, I had taken all of my time and energy into that process. It's a very exhaustive process to apply and audition and make video and all the stuff you got to do to, you know, to get to that stage. <clears throat> uh, it took about a month or two till I recovered from that, where I felt like I could really push forward. And uh, I pushed forward with another TV show it just came into my life. Uh, maybe I'll tell later more of, of this story in depth because I, I don't want this to run long. And um, there's so many stories within the story, you know. Anyway, the long story short is I got on another show uh, with the same producers. Um, and it was a show that instead of pitching to sharks, you pitch to uh, a live studio audience. So you get more of the consensus of every man. And I made it on the show. And I'll put the evidence below. I'll put a little screenshot. But uh, here's the thing. Watch, this has been like the microcosm it felt like of my life up to this point. I film for the show. I do great. And uh, approximately seven or eight months later, which would have been the summer of 2017, the show went to air. It aired on national network uh, TV here in the United States. They put me on the intro teaser episode, so a little blurb, that's the screenshot it will be from. You'll see me as I'm jumping onto the stage, so you see me for like a split second before every episode. And guess what? My episode didn't even make it to the air. I was poised and ready to have my invention and myself in front of five, six million people, and it didn't even happen. Can you imagine? Oh, another dagger, man. So that was summer of 2017. Uh, I'm going to get into more some mystical kind of things. I started getting deep into really uh, deep in meditating in the gospel of grace, just deep in meditation in general. I'm going to give you some techniques. I'm going to bring out some guided meditations if you're interested in that. I'm going to take you into my imaginal acts if you want to journey along with me on some of them. Uh, Neville says to go into your secret, as Jesus says, 
uh, into your secret place, go into your closet and shut the door behind you. He's speaking of shutting the door out to your senses. Neville says, tell no man. And I do believe that uh, for certain things. I absolutely believe in coming into points of agreement for others, especially when you're using it lovingly on behalf of others. Scripture encourages us to write down a vision and to make it plain so that those who read it can run with it. They can understand the vision and run with it. Without vision, my people perish. So there's something about sharing that which is uh, precious and holy to you. And that's what I'm here to do. That's what this channel is about. Anyway, I don't make it on the show. Uh, my goodness, right? It's been a roller coaster of a ride. This whole thing happens with my daughter in December, uh, which if you don't watch, if you, know, if you don't bother to watch the video, she gives herself appendicitis. And it's, man, it's just, we're in for the fight of our life, an 11-night stay in the hospital. It was rough. And that's about the time that all this kind of broke through in my life, and I began to understand the power of imagining creates reality. And I used it to see my daughter well and released from the hospital, hoping against hope. You'd have to be in it to know how bleak it was and how impossible it was with them pumping her full of antibiotics that are not working. And this uh, ruptured appendix that burst and is abscessing itself off against none of it's working. And I used an imaginal act, and we walked out of there on Christmas morning, December 25th, 2017. It was just an impossible thing, and it happened. And then her appendix auto-amputated itself. By the time they went in six weeks later to extract the appendix and remove it surgically, no surgery was needed other than to go in through the little hole and pull the appendix out because it had already auto-amputated itself. They stuck the little camera in to look at it, and the appendix was gone. It wasn't around the colon where it's supposed to be. The site had perfectly encapsulated itself with what the surgeon called beautiful scar tissue. And I have the picture in that video. You can look at it in the comments section. So all this radical stuff is happening. That's just one of, I kid you not, dozens of things. I couldn't even tell you all the little things within the things that are happening. It's what John the Beloved, the disciple, uh, said of the works of Christ. If they could be told and recorded, the books of the world couldn't contain them. And so this channel is the fruit of that. I can't contain it. What am I, am I supposed to do with this when my daughter's appendix auto-amputates itself? My dad's heart aneurysm disappears. My food allergies are going away. And then here in the midst of this, so uh, all this happened around Christmas time. The end of January, I go to my mailbox and you can look in the comments section below and there's a check for $50,000 from this TV show that I was on that even though it didn't go to air, I got paid my prize winnings and it came exactly at the time I needed it. I, I'm too long to share the story of how I'm sitting in this house, but I'll, I'll share this for another story in another video. It was to the penny, to the penny, the amount that I needed to get into this, which is my current dream house and my dream location in my town that I love here in Florida. Living by the sea. I mean, I'll give you the 10 cent tour the next time I'm here. It's a bit of a fixer upper, so I've been busy fixing it up, trying to take a little break to share this because I feel compelled to do this because it'll help you. Study the works of Neville for yourself and just test it to be true, will you? You got nothing to lose. I'm going to say it the same way Neville said it. Test it for yourself. And if it doesn't work, then you can call me a fraud and call him a fraud and call all of it baloney. Come on over to the subreddit for Neville Goddard www.reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Neville Goddard. Great community where you can share your questions, your concerns, your fears. Uh, I'll jump on there from time to time. But others, listen, there's but one spirit, one God and Father, one Lord over all, one imagination, which is the fountainhead of all of creation. And that's what we're going to get into, really dig into in deeper videos. But I wanted you to see just some of the works that have happened just in the last few weeks in my life. And I want to teach it to you so that you can have the keys of the kingdom and see all of your deepest desires unlocked so you can cushion the blows of this life and ultimately find your true destiny. Is that fair enough? Is that exciting to you? It's exciting to me. This is the most life-giving thing I've ever experienced in my life. And I've been at this a long time, since I can remember. If you are afraid doctrinally of Neville when you read him, as I've had friends of mine pastor friends of mine who I've gone to sit face to face, eyeball to eyeball, and I will with any of them. All of the top theologians, it doesn't matter to me. I'll sit with them. I'm a student of scripture as well, and I'll help them understand the true gospel, 
the one faith, as Paul the Apostle said it, examine yourselves to see whether you be in the faith. Do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you? So that's the only test. If when I say Jesus Christ, you think of one who lived 2,000 years ago outside of yourself in time and space, you've simply failed the test. And there's no condemnation or shame when saying that. So just accept that. It's okay. The only test is that he's in you, that you are he. Even though we speak of him as another, you are the absolute emanation of God Almighty in your own unique, wonderful way. That's why there's no label with which to define you. That's why scripture says it's unwise when you compare yourself one with another. Forget what somebody else is saying out there and how they're doing it. Even Neville, even myself, find your own unique expression of who you are. But believe the gospel. There's only one gospel. Paul is so bold as to say, my gospel is the gospel. And his gospel over and over speaks of Jesus Christ who is in you. And you really want to boil it down like Neville does? Jesus Christ is your own wonderful human imagination. The very fountainhead of all of creation, where from the beginning, everything came from nothing but God himself. Pure, unconditioned consciousness. I am that I am. That's my name forever. It really is. There's none higher. You want to find God in five seconds or less? Here you go. Observe your breath and observe your body and observe your mind and realize that the fact that you can observe those things means you are not it in totality. But who is that observer? That was probably 12 seconds, wasn't it? I know. You can't observe the observer. And there is God, your own awareness of being. So I want to encourage you. I, I want to take you. Here's a little taste of what I like to come because I want to share with you my own just inner thoughts, if you're interested in them, how I go into the quiet, how I experience God in worship. I can't sing 90% of the worship songs that I used to sing because they're directed at one out there somewhere. So if you'd like to experience as I re-experience life and share music and songs or musings or techniques for the awakening. What a great place uh, and, and a way to do it. So I'm excited that you're here, that you found me. Let's take a moment and go into the quiet. I want you to find that one burning thing in your heart. What is that one desire that just so consumes you? Well, that is the word of God. He gives you the desires of your heart. Take that one burning desire and create a short scene, even if it's reduced down to a single image, but a short scene that implies the fulfillment of your desire. What would it look like? And then catch the mood, catch the feeling. It's as simple as that. Ponder upon your bed tonight as you fall asleep. Just think of it. Don't be afraid to go in there. That's where the kingdom exists. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is within you. So come on, let's just take a moment and go into the quiet. Just consider, just take a few seconds. What would imply the fulfillment of your desire? Forget all the steps of how it would happen. Those are the ways of the Lord. So heavens are higher than the earth. So my ways are higher than your ways. Just trust his ability. And create a scene that implies that you have it. And this is the one labor that we're supposed to labor for, to enter into the rest. Give it all the vividness you can, all of the five senses, try to apply it. The sound of a friend's voice congratulating you on your success. The sound of a loved one. The feeling of their embrace. Whatever it is. For my dad's heart aneurysm, it was a doctor's report that simply said no aneurysm. And I made it as vivid as I could. I wrote it in red so I could imagine red writing and a circle around it and lines underneath of it. Just try to make it real. Crinkles in the lines in the paper as I crinkled it in my hand. And when you find your attention straying, bring it back. This is a discipline in self, a self-discipline, self-control. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Read it in the book of Galatians. 
It's one of the last ones to unfold. Everybody loves, and the church, my Christian brothers and sisters, who I dearly love, trust me, I want them to get this, because they're primed, they are set, man, to explode, as I myself am exploding. But they're stuck on the first fruits. The fruit of the Spirit is love, and they haven't moved past love, and that's okay. And joy, and peace. I know, listen, I'm not, we'll get there. But that patience and that persistence and that self-control are the inner leaves that begin to unfold and, and burst forth, and that's what's coming. It's an exercise of the mind, cultivating the Eden of your mind. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how I manifested literally the Garden of Eden. I'm talking physically in my outer world. I'm talking wild stuff. So stay tuned for the next video. I'm not doing that just to tease you. It's just because these are the things that have been happening in my life, and I'm excited to share them with you, and I don't wanna take more than 30 minutes of video. My goodness, it's, it's too long. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, hang in there, fall asleep tonight, persisting in the assumption that that which you've imagined is the truth. And when you wake up in the morning, enjoy. There's a thrill almost of denying your outer world. Even though you get wrapped up in it again, you feel tossed to and fro. Listen, there's a place of transcending that and knowing, you just have a knowing that that which you've imagined is reality and you just enjoy all of the, even the anticlimactic events that unfold because you've seen the end of the thing and you just continue to think and enjoy life from the end of it. So uh, we're going to talk about those things. I want to encourage you in the faith as we go along. Okay, so make it a great day. Love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.